The weird thing about love is that it really chooses you. Like, you have absolutely no say. And looking back on my former dating choices, I can promise you that holds true. Also, yeah, I see you blushing over there. Tell me I'm wrong. You can't, because I'm right. And even being in love with the same person for almost half a decade, I can tell you that it's still weird. Not only do you have to think about your adult self and all of the things that that adult person has to deal with, like work, taxes, laundry, fucking hate laundry, and all of the things that your adult partner has to do, like work and college and cleaning up your messes, but also literally everything you learned as a child you bring to the table too. Fearful avoidant attachment issues? Yeah, throw that on the dinner table with the candles, honey. Childhood trauma? Gotta deal with that in between vacuuming all the rooms in the house. Love makes you uncomfortable because you've only ever known it conditionally? That gets sewn into the relationship too, tied up in a nice little bow. Single or not, we bring ourselves with us, and that can be hard. That can be especially hard when your baggage is a little heavier than usual. I'm someone with the childhood that most people don't understand and an ACE score of 6 that also happens to be in a long-term relationship. And leaving my childhood with the core belief that I am literally the worst person on the face of the planet, being loved wholly romantically and platonically by the same person, I wanted to know why. Because as much as we don't want to only be reflections of our trauma, our trauma has had a heavy hand in the way that we cope, or don't cope, with life. So, of course, I asked Del. Hello Internet, my name is Effie, and this is The Human Condition. those of you that don't know or don't remember because I haven't uploaded in so long, um, I'm sorry, please forgive me. L is my long-term live-in boyfriend. He's cute sometimes and he made me promise I'd find him in our afterlife. And then we had a drill just to make sure we'd remember. Christy, from the previous episode, which you literally need to go listen to right now because this will not make any sense if you haven't. Also, go listen to part one if you haven't, you filthy cheaters also has a long-term partner, her fiancé, Zach. Having the same ACE score and sharing some of the same trauma responses, it made sense that our relationships would probably be similar, too. But we're just gonna do this. No pressure. Hi. <laughs> That's why I've been drinking. Because <laughs> we're one-take wonders here. Elle's interview was conducted by Christy because I didn't want to make Elle nervous or police his answers, which I tend to do. And let me say, she did an awesome job. Thank you, Christy. My name is Zach. I'm 27 years old. I'm a Taurus. Uh, I like video games and hiking and being out in nature and uh, just having a good time in general. My name's Leo, and I am a German slash Italian American. Talking about myself isn't a strong suit, apparently. <laughs> At least talking about myself in front of a microphone. I'm about to say camera, microphone. The way I think could be traced back to being raised by Italian immigrants and their experiences and how they raised me. Parents being at work, they were fortunate enough when I was little to have some place to bring me. It wasn't a daycare, so I'm very fortunate for that. It also introduced me to a lot of rich cultural background and history, which I still very, very much appreciate to this day. I don't know who I would be without my culture or who I am and knowing that where my family is from and the difficulties they ran into to get here. I'm very into history and think it's a very important subject to be comfortable with just because you could look at any event in history and realize its repetitiveness across other historical events and really not predict the future but put yourself at a place in time based on precedents that have already been set where you are now and see what's going to happen or have a good idea of how to make it certain things not happen. So specifically World War One and Two history, two events that have influenced my family, uh, the country I live in, and the world we live in immensely. As of right now, this moment in time, I am a international business student and I'm hoping to wrap that up soon. Mm -hmm. 
college is terrible. I wouldn't say I'm a very exciting person or a very boring person. Just maybe interesting at times at best. <laughs> Describe your like romantic relationship. Well, we met way, way before we uh, started dating. Uh, we both worked at Culver's. And uh, at first we were co-workers. And it was interesting. We both had a mutual attraction to each other. But um, she was dating somebody else at the time, as you know. Um, and I wasn't the kind of person to make the move to like steal another man's girl because I had actually been there before and I didn't want to be that guy so I kind of just stayed away and uh just wished her the best from afar and then one day I saw her uh post something on Facebook uh it was very she was in a really bad place and I could tell and she was hurting and so I reached out to her I said hey you know are you okay do you need to talk and Eventually, we just kind of met up again, and there was the spark was still there, and and now we've been together now for oh my gosh, huh? It's been a long time, six years, I think five years, like five or six years. Yeah, I think it's been a long time. It's just funny because that's how Zach and I met. <laughs> Ellen and I, we grew up together, kind of, <laughs> and then like it posted something sad on Facebook. It's like, dude, are you like? Fucking okay. I was like, yeah, Gucci man. In our daily life, Christy obviously runs her own business, and she's just been always so determined to make it work, and she's making it work with flying colors. Um, she has had problems with um, looking down on herself, you know, being down on herself a lot, and holding herself to very high expectations. And um, but recently, she's just been uh, she's been doing so great. I just. I'm I'm so happy cuz you know she's making great she's making good money. Um we have a, a decent balance now. Like there was a there was a period of time where we just worked forever and ever and ever and it was nonstop. And I worked 12 hour shifts at the hospital and, but now things are finally calming down and we're reclaiming like time for ourselves and it's just it's really awesome. As far as me, I work in security. Uh so I see a lot of shit on a daily basis. Um I, I deal with some pretty intense situations. Gosh, just last week someone almost got shot. Uh, that was wild. It's a stressful job, um, and I am at it for 12 hours, mm, three days out of the week. You know, so I get, and then I work a short day, so I have like four days off, which is really nice. And I help Christy out and uh, with her business and try to mitigate some of the monotonous stuff that she doesn't really like doing too much. It doesn't feel really aligned. So my my current that's a horrible way to start. <laughs> um, <laughs> My current relationship, we had gone to school together since elementary school and kind of friends, but not really. Um, apparently, we hung out at a few birthday parties, which I do not recall because we were in elementary school and why would I? Otherwise, we've been friends for a very long time throughout middle and high school, even though we were both terrible people who would not want to date each other at the time. And I can't say I blame her because I wouldn't want to date me either. But we started dating after high school and kind of just ended up living together and really don't regret any of it. I'm glad we were friends first. So it was a relationship that came out of a friendship. There's nothing more that I could ask for. How has dating someone with aces affected your relationship? There, there was some, <laughs> there was definitely some like trial and error when it came to a lot of certain things. Um, she can get angry very easily and frustrated very easily sometimes. And um, she projects a lot onto herself, you know, um, and then reaches out. And recently we've been studying human design and really trying to understand where our power is energetically and how our bodies work and the chakras. And, you know, I don't know if anyone has ever heard of the human human design listening to this podcast, but it's really cool and you should check it out because um, it's helped us understand Christy a lot. Um, it's helped us understand that, yes, she does like get angry and frustrated but if that affects me and makes me angry and frustrated and i put that off to her she will reflect it back tenfold definitely to be a lot more aware that because i see one thing is a objective truth that is not objectively how all people see things what has loving someone with aces with a high aces score taught you it's taught me that no matter your 
stance in life, no matter where you came from, no matter your privilege or lack thereof, we all have trauma. We, we all carry hurt within us. And sometimes that hurt's not even our own. It's, it's the hurts from our predecessors, our parents, which translated from their parents and their parents and their parents, sort of this generational pattern and cycle of just just hurt and pain and hate and anger and all the shit we actually do not want and I believe we're not put here to solely experience. We're, we're here, this is a miracle. The chances of us even being here is a miracle. So why wouldn't we want to be happy coming here? If, if we had some sort of conscious before coming here, mm -hmm. why would we choose to come here to suffer? That makes no sense. Who would do that? Nobody. So we came here with the intention of being happy and the intention of living a fulfilled life. But we have all of these constructs in our society and in our generational conditioning that says, well, if you're not this, then you're this. Or if you're not this, then you're this. And that can be on whatever you want. You know, if you're not a Christian, you're, you know, condemned to hell. Or if you're not, uh, if you're not a soccer hooligan at a soccer game, you shouldn't even belong there. You know, like things like that, just these arbitrary limitations that we've put on ourselves, which to me doesn't make any sense. Like we should, we should be here to be happy. Mm -hmm. We want to live by each other's happiness. We don't want to live by each other's misery. Not to quote Charlie Chaplin. But, I mean, he had a point in that speech. So it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's taught me to try to be kind. And in order to be kind, you have to be kind to yourself so that you can be kind to other people. And especially people who have had it worse than you. Because not everyone's, I mean, we're all born of equal ability and capability, and I absolutely believe that, but we are not all born of equal circumstances. That's ludicrous. I'm sorry, we're not. We're not. Uh, my circumstances are nowhere near what, you know, my lover's circumstances were growing up. I couldn't imagine being in fight or flight all the time. I've been in fight or flight because I've dealt with some very dangerous situations, but not on a daily basis in my home or at least where I felt was dangerous, even if I was in real danger or not. I think that's what's important is like, as a parent, you need to create a safe environment for your family. That's paramount. Or how people have kids and, or create a family and don't establish a safe place is just, mm -hmm. I can't believe it, but it's real. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So when Chrissy would tell me all these stories, I'd just be dumbfounded. I'm like, are you serious? Your, your sister actually did that to you. Your dad actually treated you that way. Are you kidding me? I remember she told me uh, one instance, and I won't say what it is, um, but it actually made me really mad. Like I, I wanted to drive over there and beat the shit out of her dad for what happened. And I you know, had to control that, obviously, because you know that's not acceptable. And does that change what happened? No. So, just got to learn from it and understand that, yeah, that's fucked up. I don't ever, ever want to create an environment where she feels the way she felt then. And so, yeah, it's, it's opened my eyes to this sort of kinder heart space of just like trying to be understanding. And even when she's mad at me, trying to understand and be calm doesn't work all the time yeah. because you know we're people you yeah know, we're to, human. especially when you're especially when you're with somebody for a long time they know how to push your buttons you know? Uh -huh. they know what really yeah. pisses you off yeah so yeah no it's not easy you know it's a challenge but it's a worthy challenge it's taught us both a lot of patience with ourselves and yeah yeah with mostly ourselves in our relationship and we've had our ups and downs you know we haven't always been like Woo, so happy. Well, like everyone <laughs> yeah it's like honeymoon period and then you know the, the spark is not the same anymore, right? There was that really rough time that we had. I think it was, it was a few years back. It was really bad. She was, she was not in a great state. Neither was I. I was a depressive wreck. I didn't have a job and I was trying to find something and nobody would take me. And I, it was like months and months of looking for a job. And I just felt really bad about myself. And I was projecting that on her. And then she was freaking out because her business was not getting anywhere and she was still working at jobs she hated. and. There's a lot of environmental factors that really were fucking us. But from that, 
we're now in a really great space. I feel like every relationship, aces or not, you have to go through like that really tough period of time where like things just suck and then it'll be fine. Right. Either it'll be fine or you, you won't be together, you know, <laughs> whatever. Exactly, yeah. Um, it's taught me a lot about patience and a lot about how adversely traumatic events can affect people in the sense to where if I run into someone who's just an outwardly angry being and a very standoffish personality, they might be that way for a reason. Even though it's not my responsibility to deal with them, it definitely gives me the perspective to think twice about why they may act like that and to be a little more caring and a lot less self-centered in the way I think. It's something that has taught me. Not all negative reactions come from a negative outlook to others. They come from negative experiences instead. In what ways have you had to adapt to accommodate someone with a high ACES score? I've mostly just had to increase a skill I've already had, which is patience. Understanding where they're coming from, from anger and really introspecting. Because, you know, in my life, you know, I, I grew up with a really good family who treated me well and loved me and cared for me. Maybe over cared for me. And that's might be why I'm a little lazy and sometimes a, a bit uh, kiddish when it comes to like wanting things. And so I've like before I started dating her, I didn't even really have a bank account to speak of. Like I maybe had three hundred dollars at a time in my bank account because I would always spend it right away as soon as I got it. And it was being with her that taught me how to save money. So now we're like swimming in it and enjoying it, you know, not maybe not as much as we could have been, but that's mostly because we're working all the time. Mm -hmm. I've had to be kinder to myself, too. Um, I'd get down on myself for making mistakes and things like that instead of actually changing and integrating the learning from the mistakes instead of just beat myself up. And so I've had to learn to be kinder with myself and in turn be kinder with her because I don't get very emotional too often. I, I try to stay as level-headed as possible. Uh, sometimes just can't be helped. Um, but Chrissy's definitely been more emotional than I have. And with good reason. I mean, she lived in a place that was unsafe her whole life. You know, I, I can't imagine that, honestly. I always felt safe at home, you know, for the most part. Sometimes not when they were fighting, but that's just normal human interaction, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently it was a lot worse <laughs> before I was born. Like my sister tells me horror stories all the time. Um, but when I hit the picture, I just, I just can't relate to the same way. I couldn't imagine not trusting my dad, you know, or not trusting my sister and, and being in a, in a hostile environment where it's like you achieve or you're not worthy. I just, I didn't grow up that way put unworthiness on myself. I didn't have somebody else saying I, was, I wasn't I was worthy. I had everybody saying I was worthy, and I just didn't believe it. <laughs> just be a little more mindful. Um, I think it would start with myself and my own perspective first, in the sense of making sure she's comfortable. Um, I usually preferred to sit in restaurants in certain places, but it was never out of a place of trauma, it was more of a place of comfort, so I know I could be very straightforward and almost angry sounding when I speak, even though in no way am I actually ever angry, it's just loud Italian genetics make my <laughs> volume control non-existent, so I've had to be more mindful of how I speak as well, because I could understand now that even though I don't word things or make things sound angry, they can, and that may or may not be triggering. How has loving someone with ACEs affected you personally? Kind of in the same answer as before, honestly. It's, um, it has maybe put me more in touch with my emotions. For a long time, I kind of shut them down because Nah, eh, it's not worth feeling that, you know, eh, it's not worth my energy. And while I still kind of hold on to that because I want to protect myself, it has allowed me to feel more deeply. When she feels pain, I understand it greater. I have to be strong for her, but it has allowed me to tap into my old traumas too. It has still allowed me to connect deeper. 
sometimes it's hard when she, when, when she's on the down, you know? So I, so I naturally just follow. I also come on the down, I feel what she feels, and our energies affect each other. And sometimes it's difficult because maybe we spend too much time together. And it's just a natural thing that we humans do. When you spend so much time with somebody, like 24 seven, living day in and day out with each other, you just tend to get on each other's nerves sometimes for no particular reason. Like your presence offends me, dog. Can you leave? For why like are you breathing? Minutes? Yeah, why are you breathing? <laughs> exactly. Like why are you here? And then you know, I have some shortcomings. She has some shortcomings, and we both, uh, for a while there, it was very difficult for us to take responsibility for our own shit. We would start, you know, hot potatoing the responsibility of our own emotions towards each other, and that just you know, we, we became aware of it after a few years, and, and then we finally started. You know, accepting like, hey, we're both at fault here. I'm like, hey, yeah, I fucked up. You know, I made the mistake, but your reaction is you. It's under your control. I, I don't control that. Mm -hmm. I fucked up. I apologize that I fucked up. But please don't be mean. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, you know, things like that where it's, um, it's just one of those things now where we don't even play the hot potato game. Okay, no, this is my potato. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to better my potato. Loving someone with aces has affected me personally in the sense of forcing me to get out of my own head and look at things from other people's perspectives, which is a, definitely a positive, but also affected me personally with having to deal with the potential ups and downs that are of, now that I look at it and see it and understand it, are of no fault of her own, but are definitely no less frustrating to be more considerate of others in general which was something I don't think I would get out of a relationship with someone who hadn't been through her experiences but I also don't see that as a negative thing it's given me a perspective through her eyes that while I've always understood the world's not a great place I had never gone out of my way to make it more comfortable for others before Otherwise, though, hasn't affected me in any adverse way, except for when she was going through treatments, and that was very hard on both of us. I think I took like a two or three month hiatus from my job even to solely just be there for her while she went through the most difficult time of her life and finally faced these things, which that was time I would not spend anywhere else. I was glad I did that. In the end, the little bit that you go out of your way to make someone else who's experienced things like that, traumatic events, comfortable, is just a very small price to pay for just a little bit of comfort for someone who's gone through something that you will never be able to understand. Would you change anything at all? Just anything about the situation, about the way that she had to grow up, or your relationship for the way it's affected you? No. No, I, I don't think I would, because if, and I mean, it might sound fucked up to say, I would like to have wished her a happier childhood, but it wouldn't have made her into who she is today. She'd be a completely different person. Right. And so would I. So, and everything we've experienced together has made us into who we are. So, you know, again, no, I think, I think we're both becoming better and happier people. I think we're, we're creating this environment that's really safe and energetically higher and, I mean, even more spiritual. I just, you know, I, I, feel, I feel better now than I have in a long time, like ever. And yeah, I mean, we still have our dips and sometimes we argue and stuff, but we get over it. We move past it. We, we find solutions. We don't just stay stuck on our problems. We try to move and make changes. and. I think that is what's really driving us into a better place, you know? Like, if we were on a specific timeline of, like, all the bad shit that could possibly ever happen, we're starting to, like, edge away from that. We're starting to move into a different timeline where it's like, no, we can, we can be happy. You are not your past. Your past does not define you. Like, it's helped mold you into who you are, but that's not the defining factor. And if you keep focusing on that, then it will become the defining factor because you're not focusing on the present. Um, if I were to change anything, I would definitely keep the mindset and all I've gained from 
dating someone with aces, but I would definitely, for her benefit, I would change the genuine trauma or fear that she experiences in certain situations without having to eliminate the experiences themselves. Just because I couldn't imagine living with something like that every day or having it be at the forefront of your mind with every social interaction everywhere you go. But I understand that they have made her who she is as a person. And that's the person I love. So I wouldn't want her to be a different person, but I would want her to be a person who doesn't have something like trauma leading her decisions first. Especially in a place where, like living in the United States, it's not like we have to live on the edge, have those survival instincts guide us every day. We do not live in a war zone. We don't live in some place where survival is the bottom line, but she's in that mindset all the time. That's the only thing I would change. I guess my final thoughts would be um, for people who are struggling with their relationships, try to understand patience, be honest with your partner, even if it hurts. And if you really mean for it to work, do your best. That's it. Just do your best. And if, if you're not in it, cut the cord. Don't continue to waste your energy and their energy pouring into this relationship that you know is not going to be fruitful for either of you. And by fruitful, I mean make a better person in general. Right. Because, like, you know. That's what your connections with people should do. Yeah, exactly. You know, you don't, you don't want to connect with people to stay stuck in your pain patterns. You want to connect with people so that you can be better, be happier. Amazing. Is there anything else you would like to say about living with somebody with ACEs? It's definitely something that introduces you to a different perspective on life, but it's not a negative perspective. It's just a perspective that I'm fortunate enough to not have. And do you have any advice for somebody who's currently dating somebody with ACEs? As long as you're willing to be patient and to be able to work on yourself then you have nothing to worry about. You only have stuff to gain, so. I think oftentimes when life tells us we're not worthy, we innately feel unworthy. And the thing is, people don't even have to say it to your face. They say it through their actions. If your family has never made you feel special, or if they didn't protect you, or if they neglected your needs, you're being told time and time again, through action or neglect of, that you are hard to love. But Zach and I have shown Christy and I today that we're not hard to love. Life withholding love from us has nothing to do with our worthiness of it. And sure, maybe I need a little more patience, a little more comfort, a few more accommodations than other people, but there is someone out there that gives me the things that I need because he thinks that I'm worth it. And I think regardless of whether or not I had someone there to show me that love, to give me that message of love, that my inherent worthiness would still be there. If you listening to this right now have lived a life that has not shown you the love that you deserve, I'm here today to tell you that you still deserve that love, even if you don't have a Zach or an L there to tell you directly or to be in your podcast episodes about your trauma and how that affects your love life, you're still worthy of love. You're not as terrible as you think you are, I can promise you that much. And you can still have a life filled with support and love and success regardless of how many years you've spent surviving instead of living or recovering from the things you had to deal with as a child. I never thought that I was worthy of love, let alone romantic love, let alone a happy and healthy romantic relationship. I thought when I finally would be good enough for love, it would be because I had a successful career or did the things that nobody thought I could do. But the thing is, Elle doesn't like me because I'm some special being that is fantastic despite my flaws. And he doesn't think that loving me is hard either. So yes, I'm a person with aces and trauma, and maybe I'm wired a little bit differently, and maybe life this far has only taught me trauma responses, but I'm also just a person. A person just as easy to love and just as deserving and complete as anyone else on this earth, trauma or not. When I started this series, I didn't know where I wanted it to go. I didn't know where I wanted to end it. 
but I think that ending with the messages that I've learned making this episode is a good place to end. And maybe you've learned something different. Maybe this series made you think of your late husband, or it made you scoff at my cheesy optimism and vulnerable portrayal of love, and that's okay. We all learn different things at different times. And to be completely honest, it's not like I particularly know what I want my legacy to be. I'm just a girl with a knack for storytelling and a lot of trauma-based perspectives. But in the almost six months I've worked on this series, I've turned into a girl with a knack for storytelling that has learned to love herself a little more. Like I said, this isn't the end of the story. My journey with myself and my childhood has only just begun. I mean, honestly, I'm only 23 and I can't even rent a car yet. Um, I barely qualify as an adult. The inner child in me is still sad and still suffering, but she's healing and she's growing. And her aces have determined her core beliefs, her neural pathways, but they will not determine my future. Okay, well, thank you so much for listening to this episode and this series. Honestly, I'm pretty positive that the last hiatus will be the last one for the rest of this season. So please look forward to a new podcast episode next week. I love this podcast and telling my stories the way that I want to and learning more about myself and the world around me in the process. But also, everything I talk about on here is true and my mental illness doesn't just disappear because I love creating things. So um, that's been a struggle of mine lately. Anyways, um, no more sad boy stuff. If you want to keep up with everything the human condition, um, see what our next episodes are about, see pictures of my snails, whatever. You can follow us at The Human Pods, basically anywhere you can type a username, and that's the words The Human Pods. If you want to be on the show, or have an idea, or want to say how much you love Effie, OMG, best podcast producer ever, please email us at thehumanpods at gmail.com. As always, if you want to follow me and ruin your feed, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at E-P-H-E-M-E-R-A-L-I-T-I. That's ephemerality with an I at the end instead of a Y, because I'm so artsy. If you guys are interested, um, I have a a TikTok at Night Hospitaler, uh, where I do, like, random skits of characters and upload just random bloggy stuff. Thank you so much. I love you all. Bye!